talented group of craftsmen in Portland, Oregon recently built a unique sort of factory, a refactory that makes stained glass from recycled bottles. Now, it was built using discarded materials from a variety of unlikely sources. The group was determined to substitute ingenuity for money whenever possible. Now that the factory is producing stained glass on a full-time basis, the craftsmen are ready to tackle a new project one which will probably demand an equal amount of resourcefulness. And they've decided to build a glass entrance gate for their parking area. It will help advertise their glass-making business and keep the watchdog Jake in the backyard where he belongs. Any design that will fit within a six, all you're actually doing as far as design is you design everything within a six-inch square. I'm just questioning the structure. Structurally, it doesn't matter how you put your x rays well, as long as you have a mesh on it. I'm talking about something that's going to hold the glass. The gate's an in interesting thing. To have a, a gate made out of glass seems like probably the most unfunctional thing you could think of. That's because most people's comprehension of glass is something that breaks very easily. A window, uh, a wine glass, uh, they're thin, delicate shapes. But if glass is thick, it becomes extremely strong. Aside from design, let's approach it structurally. I think that's first thing, okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you approach it structurally. You tell you what, what structure we have to have with the materials that you have on hand. The use of glass okay. and metal in the gate, each material has its own qualities to it in terms of its strength, resilience, um, length of time that it'll last. Like you may think that the glass will probably be broken before the metal would rust. Well, that's not necessarily true. The metal will rust within maybe 10, 15 years if we choose not to paint it. The glass will last indefinitely. Yeah, well, well this, this is strong. Is this, is, this is strong, too. I don't know. Well, I think it gets down to making first the one big decision whether we should do it as one gate or as two gates. My reasoning for having two gates is that it's just so much easier to open it up. It's got less movement. We've got less, it fits between the tree. Oh, I think two gates. Are... So let's, let's two gates. Let's two gates. Two hey, gates what's, the what's, the height of, what's the height of the gut? As long as we have the material glass available to us in large quantities, because that's what we make, that makes it a natural material. Then let's make it a beautiful glass gate. Let's do something artistic, because we have the ability. So we're using all the things, all the resources that we have available to us, the glass, the steel, and the background to put something together that's well designed. junkyard where they recycle ships, tear down ships, and uh, sell the metal scrap. The metal that we buy from them is relatively inexpensive. We should use whatever resources are present in whatever form they're present. I see them all just as a resource that I can use today or tomorrow or the next day. But at the same time, I have an, an ethical value of not to waste those as I use them. But not to use them would be the wrong thing to do. Portland Recycle Team, which is a nonprofit organization devoted to recycling of anything from used motor oil to glass, which we buy for a cent and a half a pound. If 
we can set up small industry to use recycled materials on a local basis, then you get away from all the transportation fees. If they can be taken right to the source by the people, you get rid of a lot of handling. If you can develop equipment to sort and clean it so you don't have to use the manpower for the drudge work, then it can be used on the spot. This material is delivered in 55 gallon drums on a loading dock. Bottles are shoveled in, it's crushed to a frit. We take this material and use it as our basic raw material. Everybody lives with secondhand things. And all waste or garbage is a secondhand material that most people aren't ready to deal with. I look in a garbage can, and to me, it's a resource. Man, there's paper I can burn. There's tin cans that I can melt up and reuse and make into something else. There's glass that I can melt down and make into sheet glass or blow it into art objects or into vases or functional objects. We've formulated out over the past uh, six months a uh, formula for the use of uh, recycled glass. It was always pretty much accepted that recycled glass could not be used to get some of the rare colors, some of the hard to get colors that require very close molecular association with the metals. Uh, we've proven this to be untrue. To make the glass that we buy at a penny and a half pound, it would cost us somewhere in the neighborhood of nine cents a pound to make it. It also melts easier because it's already glass. To make that reaction take place initially requires a certain amount of energy above the actual energy required to just melt it. Obviously, to get a raw material to a, to a finished material involves some form of energy, whether it be just human energy or mechanical energy or thermal energy. The fact that fuels in terms of, say, natural gas that we use, there's a finite amount, so someday it has to run out. I think it's a good chance that it's going to run out long before most people think it actually is. You can build things to many different levels. You can build things to, like, a real high polish or, or just really direct, very direct, like that gate is very direct. Like the weld beads are all functional weld beads. There's no decoration on it. I've worked in glass for about eight years. And uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a slowly evolving learning process. You can't say, pick out a point in time and say, well, that's when I knew that, because I still don't really know. Even scientists of this day and age don't really understand what's going on in the melting of glass totally. And people who, Egyptians before the time of Christ, were melting it. It's a very uh, mysterious material. Physicists call glass a super cool liquid because it never crystallizes. That is a definition of glass. It's a non-crystalline, amorphous material. It's made out of crystalline raw materials that, that are melted, and as they cool, they just never crystallize. For instance, you take a piece of steel, you heat it up, it gets liquid, and you cool it down, and it stays a liquid until all at one point, the whole mass becomes a solid, becomes non-movable. piece of glass is heated up, becomes liquid, and as you cool it down, it stays that way, it never crystallizes.
that isn't much of a break down there. Okay. Sir, oh, that's a good break. Listen to the noise it made when it went crash. All the way in. It's not going to keep anybody out, that's for sure. I think it's structurally pretty sound. We'll see when we, when we get it hung. It's getting heavy. I'd say that's one half side of that gate at present time without the you know, colored glass on it. Weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 225 pounds. And that's a lot to uh, put out over seven feet. chosen blue 20 years ago. We wouldn't have chosen blue 10 years ago because at that time, perhaps the glues weren't available. The glass is pretty heavy. You know, I think it ought to just weigh itself enough to bond it. Oh, put the bridge. Yeah, one thing you've right here. Yeah. Brick here and here. Look at yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that should be cushioned up with uh, an extra amount of glue. The you level know. of technology definitely determines the use of the resources of the time. Something today can be glued together with outrageous glues, or they can be uh, taken up into outer space and molecularly welded together. We initially proposed uh, welding together a steel frame, filling it with a six by six wire mesh that's used to reinforce uh, concrete driveways and uh, glue glass onto it from each side and just sort of uh, encase this reinforcing right within the glass like it were uh, wired glass almost. As we developed the idea, it became obvious to us that it wasn't going to work, that it was a shoddy, nowhere solution. But it was an initial proposal. It got us thinking about it. We came up with one thing out of it, and that was that we were going to glue glass together. Uh, it's sturdy. Out of an initial proposal that didn't work came a final solution to a problem. Perfect. I think that was a good idea. Yeah. That's in the wrong way. This one here? Yeah. No, come on.
I think this ought to be the last piece to put in. You're very fond of doing like this, as I recall. Yeah, I'd like to know how this piece goes in. Oh, it's upside down. How long are we going to take for that glue to dry? An hour to be enough to put up. 24 yeah. hours uh, to get pulled. Right. But, but we're going to have to be pretty careful while carrying it. Ben Casey coming out of the second hospital. Awesome. I'll use the right one. <laughs> Actually, plenty of ones have done very well. Sometimes that's what we have a lot of bees around. I'll put my down right where it's going to be. My, uh, in front. We've got to take it back. Never mind. We're going to have to take it back out again. Crazy. Jake, this is your last piece that's going in here, man. Your freedom is had it. Jake says I can fly to the house. I can go wrong. You got to give up whole gate, glass stone, 26, 25, 24. Watch this. This is uh, no gray in the crusher. as long as it has function and we need a gate there. It might become a recyclable material itself. We might make it into something else. Jake, what do you think?